welcome you yet to another episode here at the Debate Circle. And in today's debate, we are graced by the lovely Mount Lavena and Moe Girls Nairobi. And the motion for dissection today is the Kenyan media is overstepping their role in covering sensitive issues in the society. I repeat the motion again. The Kenyan media is overstepping their role in covering sensitive issues in the society. All the best to both teams. Team proposition, first speaker, you have three minutes. What exactly do we mean when we talk about the media? The media simply refers to the various ways in which a large number of people get information. However, the media is not only a source of information, but also a source of entertainment. These are the television, the radios, the newspaper, and even the internet. What do we mean by overstepping? Overstepping simply means, be, um, it simply means going beyond a certain limit. And when we talk about sensitive issues, these are matters that should be handled with great care. Now, join me, Adelaide Mokuhe, from the Mount Lavena Girls Secondary School, as I go against my opponents in proposing the motion that states the Kenya media is truly overstepping their role in covering sensitive issues. On my first point, I would like to bring up the issue on security. I believe that security is one of the most critical issues in a person's life. But with the media on the loose, this can easily be overlooked. What do I mean? The media, with the aim of showcasing the lifestyle of our Kenyan influencers, they may end up exposing the location of their influencers. When the, when the enemies see this, they may take advantage of this and easily plot an attack against them. Adding on to my point, the media may go to the extent of even invading the houses and private properties of our influencers and what for, just to gather more information and evidence of our influencers. On to my second point. The media tends to pose the false mental image of our Kenyan influencers. And how does this actually happen? When the media posts the photos and videos of our influencers, the public, once they see this, they actually start to compare themselves and even go to the extent of trying to copy their lifestyles. The, the public goes to the extent of actually selling their wealth in order to be able to purchase the shoes, the clothes, the purses that the, that the influencers carry around. I personally think that the, um, the, the public should be comfortable with the kind of lifestyle they're living in and should not go ahead and compare themselves. But thanks to the media, they easily, fell, they easily compare themselves. On to my third point, I would like to bring out um, the media um, lacks accountability. What do I mean when I say this? The, once the public shares a certain photo or video to the media, they easily, they, they just go ahead and post it without actually investigating or researching on whether this is factual or it's just rumors. Once they post this and they're actually rumors, this actually destroys the image of the influencers. You know, like, even investors might shy away of engaging in, trade, in trading and business activities with the influencers because of what they have seen on the media. I personally don't think that it is right for the media I personally don't think that it is right for the media to overstep in covering sensitive issues. Thank you. Team opposition, first speaker, you have three minutes. So I want us to familiarize with the terms that are found in our motion. Now what is overstepping? Overstepping is going beyond what is considered acceptable or correct. And what is the Kenyan media? Kenyan, what is the Kenyan media? The Kenyan media is, these are the main ways by which Kenyans receive information or even entertainment. This can be through television, radio, or even the internet. Now, journalists face some complexities when conveying difficult news stories, reporting on issues such as suicide, sexual abuse, or even migration is a skill that is often glossed over in a journalist's education. But by combining theory and practice, this, co this collection has corrected this oversight, and it has given journalists the expertise and understanding to report on these subjects both ethically and responsibly. Now, let us go to the well-known story of um, the story in Shakahola. 
let us shed light on that contra controversial yet unavoidable issues such as religious extremism, which brings me to the recent incidents of terrorism in Shakahola. Due to false teachings by religious leaders, um, well known as McKen Paul Mackenzie, um, if this wasn't brought to light, how many people, how, how would this, uh, how many people would still be in the dark to all these cultic activities? Wasn't it brought to the, to the light because of media? Didn't media help expose Paul Mackenzie's doings? Now let's bring something else. Um, activities, some, some archaic activities that occur in Kenya, some that should be abandoned, for example, FGM or early marriages. Media has shone light on these stories. It has been able to tell us more about how, um, how, 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 how far of, how, how much progress we are making as a country. This way, most people have been able to be, to be brought out of this archaic ways and uh, yeah, we, we, we've been able to make progress. Yeah, thank you for your time. Team proposition, second speaker, you have three minutes. To my trusted opponents, whatever you said it might or might not be true, but for a fact, the media is indeed overstepping. Why? The Shakahola issue. What the media did see that, didn't they? But what happened next? Paul Mac the person in front, the person in charge of that cult was put under police arrest. But how do we know he's put under justice? The world is revolving, the information, the information in it is changing. Everyone wants to know what happens next. It's a grand debate, is it not? Unite with the one and only Ivy Gadzuku in proposing the motion at hand, shall we? The, to build up my argument, mental health is highly afflicted for both the young and the old. Let us take as a case study the case of the Kitengala woman, who he actually murdered and even ate the organs of our young child. What is the possible outcome? Loss of sanity, dreams invaded, and even high rates of anxiety only caused by the media. To my, for my second proposal, a lot of citizens' privacies have been intruded. Why? Take a likely guess. For information, precisely. The media puts two and two together just to get the single ounce of information to take one enemy or just a friend down. It can be just for a favor for a friend, or even for revenge, or even to take down a common enemy. For my third proposal, families, marriages, and friendships crumble to the ground. They gain ample, too much unnecessary information just to break a good relationship growing, going on have this mental picture of invade of have this mental picture of innocent children's lives destroyed more than a bombed building no foundation leads to more depression for my last proposal tribes and communities feud have been heated up by the media how take a likely guess that's a question worth asking. It has taken sides and even broken trust among rivaling communities. What happens next? It remains a sheer mystery. To sum up, the media has tarnished our country's reputation and has killed our patriotism. It has been Mount Lavenagal School representative. This case is dismissed. Second speaker, team opposition, you have three minutes. Let me take you back to 17 years ago, on 26th May, the night of 2000 and 2006, the nation media house was ransacked, burnt down, CCTV cameras were destroyed. Further down on Likoni Road, the printing headquarters were burnt down. A journalist who went to cover this was shot on sight. In his line of work, this is just but one of the least reasons why I strongly oppose the motion the Kenyan media is overstepping their role in covering sensitive issues in the society. I am Lois Wemboy Warimo, and I am more than elated to represent Moy Girls School Nairobi in opposing this motion. 
I would first like to rebuttal my opponents by saying the media is not accountable for pressing charges on Paul McKenzie. The, media, the media's role was just to shed light on this. Religion is the opium of the mind. And this man therefore decided to use this naivety of these people to take advantage of them. Therefore, it was the advantage to the people of Kenya because we came to know of these unfortunate happenings, unfathomable happenings that we cannot come to shed light on. Um, on saying that the children who are, on the children who are being cyber bullied and everything, it is the responsibility of the parents to oversee the role that their children are playing on the media. According to statistics from Google, 74% of Kenyans trust the radio, 69% trust television, and 31% trust government officials for information on current affairs. These statistics would not be true if the Kenyans were not su supporting the media. If they think that they're overstepping their role, then they would opt for other options. Are we talking about traditional options, horn blowing? No, that's why you opt for the media. It is the Kenyan media that is the source of the data and information that I and my opposers present to you today. Articles in Kenya and newspapers are a source of invaluable data. It is a misconception that we are profiling our media as oversteppers, while these people are working day and night to provide information to us. We should get used to these issues being in the spotlight. Paul McKenzie being in the spotlight is an issue that we should be getting used to and not being racially profiled or anything profiled as overstepping. Um, these are not crossed boundaries. They are not. They are issues that need to be talked about on the media. We actively need to be on the media and to pose a positive influence on the media. What role do you play in the media? Let us please drop the imposition that the media just means the, is just linked to journalism. Anyone who has links to social media platforms is part of the media. I am part of the media and you are part of the media. What influence are you having in the media? Let us not be naive when it comes to defining the, me the media terms. I am very elated to be here. Thank you for your time. Team opposition have been team proposition instead have been tasked um, with the question of how can they give us examples of communities that have actually been affected um, by the so-called incitement from media and team opposition have been uh, tasked with the question of justifying the trust in media, knowing very well it's the same tool that is used to spread misinformation. <laughs> team proposition, third speaker, you have three minutes. Thank you very much for the question. Now, let me put this out. Not even long ago, a social media platform posted a video of a Kikuyu man speaking bad about the Luo community. And why is this? Because of the current elections that they, they were going on at the time. Now, this has brought a feud between the Luo and the Kikuyu. Why? Because of the different political parties. And the media is encouraging this by putting it out. And I don't understand how is that is helping our country. I refuse to let my people be overthrown by the abject situations and let it put God's fear in them. I refuse to be shadowed by the sumptuous surroundings, forgetting that sparkling white wine is a poor man's champagne. Join the only Alexis Mutiso from the Mount Lavana Girls in proposing the motion that the Kenyan media is definitely overstepping their role in covering sensitive issues. On to my first point, sensationalism. This is presenting information in a way that brings shock. The Kenyan media is bringing sensationalism and bias in their pursuit of higher ratings and increased readership. Yes, readership, meaning the more number of readers. Now, thus, the media tends to sensationalize sensitive issues, focusing more on creating dramatic narratives rather than providing objective and balanced reporting. This sensationalism can fuel public outrage, distort facts, and also distort and promote skewed understanding of events. Let's take example. Not long ago, there was a famous celebrity, a YouTuber, who was accused of even having a relationship with a cousin. And there was more to this. The reality was the child was just looking like the uncle, yet nothing had happened. But what did the media do? 
They wanted to create a dramatic narrative by saying he slept with his cousin. I do not get why this is necessary media. On to my second point. The Kenyan media may bring a wrong perception on certain issues and cases at hand. What do I mean by this? The media may spread wrong confidential information or put out wrong accusations or even exaggerate information which may end up bringing reputation of influencers. Now, I don't understand how, even how they try to fail to prioritize the public interest instead of focusing on the critical issues such as corruption and poverty or governance, they're telling us how people are suddenly getting married or people are, are in a relationship. Now, how is this helping you as a person? Kindly, think out loud, food for thought. How is this helping you as a person? How is marriage or relationships helping you? Yet, you should know what is actually happening. Now, join me in this 21st century, knowing very well that we are the media and the media is us. The battle lines have been drawn. Table position. Third speaker, you have three minutes. In the words of US President Joe Biden, free press is a pillar of free society. Perhaps the main pillar, not the enemy. Journalism is not a crime. Saying that the Kenyan media is overstepping its role in informing us is rather narrow-minded and completely dismissive of the pivotal role played by the media. My name is Shamala Elizabeth of the My Girls School Nairobi, here to take sad antagonism on this motion. To address the question asked, so, how are we to trust the media when they propagate lies? When they make us feel as though we are not so familiar with what is going on? Well, there are many, many laws in the Constitution that govern the operation of the media. And it is our role as citizens to report such cases of lying on the media and have it handled by the government. I would like to correct our dear proposer who mentioned a story about a YouTuber and all that. Well, he later came and said that the child was his. So maybe you should familiarize yourself a bit with what you're saying. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let us widen the lens through which we see our media. They help the police to catch up with law offenders. For example, those who propagate lies on the media itself. Think of last year's incident when a young lady was aggressively, aggressively attacked by motorbike riders who tried to yank her out of her car, tearing her clothes in the process. Videos of this were rampantly shared on the media and caused great uproar among the citizens. It also initiated the action of government and law enforcers. The men who attacked this lady were soon arrested and convicted of their crime by the court of law. I would also like to add that our journalists do so much for us. They are on our side, okay? For example, April 2021, a young journalist named Piriti Mwambia, who after releasing her police expose on how police uniforms and guns were found with convicts, was threatened. Her life was threatened. She was forced to move out of the country. She went to the United States, and the latest we have on her is that she was abandoned by the people who took her there. The organization that took her there abandoned her, and now she's nearly homeless. Let us not be against the media. Let us be for the media. Let us support them. Let us fight for their rights as they have fought for ours. Thank you.
team proposition. You have one minute to make your closing remark. To my opponent, you said that um, in 2006, the media this, media that, but we are in 2023. You need to be up date. Now, I would like to inform you that the media is changing. Whatever was happening in 2006 is not what is happening now. I need to inform you that you need to update yourself. I do not disagree with anything that my fellow proposer said, but I would just like to add on that on serious issues such as unemployment, this media that you're saying is on your side is posing the Kenyan government as a nuisance. Yet, you're depending on this hustler fund, which the government implied, which is helping your people, your youth, your parents. Please, state your facts and be precise. Team opposition, you have one minute to make your closing remark. Team proposition, yes, times are changing. But one thing is still the same. The spirit of a true journalist. Their mission is one, to bring the truth to light and to help solve the problems that exist in our society today. This government that you say the media is so against is killing the media. Let us talk about how last year, the nation media had to fire several, several of their journalists after a command from the new government. Why? Because they are telling us the truth. Because they're exposing the lies that are told by our government officials who we trust oh so much. Ladies and gentlemen, team antagonism is the right side. very well debated motion however i felt like the examples that were used could have been more you know elaborate i felt like the opposers the opposers that is um, moy girls for example should have used whatever you're doing on the podium this is media this thing is being televised so really it's your, the media in this case is not overstepping so that could have been a good example that you could have jumped onto uh, speaking to Mount Lavena in general, uh, the first speaker, Mokuhe, you had a very good intro. You, your voice, how you project, you know, and your coherence came out very well. But like my co-judge said, influencers, influencers. So we felt that was a bit more inclined to social media, and media is very wide. Uh, Ivy, fantastic rebuttal. Overall, I felt like your examples on mental health, intrusion to privacy were very relevant. And that was actually collaborated or complemented by Alexis in you know, sensationalization uh, and distortion of facts and all that. So generally, I felt like this team was coherent. It was seamless flow of the same ideas by one leader after another. First speaker, Moi Girls, Fiona, the definition of terms was uh, fairly well done. Uh, you gave realistic examples, the Shakahola massacre, and uh, you gave credit to the media. Then you brought on board uh, the issue of uh, FGM, early marriages, and uh, we felt from the judges' desk that uh, if you brought on board examples and statistics and figures to back up these arguments, your mastery of content could have uh, really stood out. Ivy, your role as uh, the second speaker is to rebuttal, so you must keenly take note of what the other speakers say, so that when you come to the floor, you rebuttal those points, and then you uh, give your points if uh, you still have some time. So I felt uh, there was need to rebuttal the Shakahola incident better. Lois Werimo, you're a passionate speaker. Excellent mastery of content. Your coherence of argument was on point. However, when you talk about statistics from Google, 
be more specific because you know Google is like a blanket. It, it's it's a website for I mean it's a search engine which has got a lot of uh, content from various companies and all that. So you could be more specific so that your argument uh, gains a lot or holds a lot of water. Otherwise, uh, there is something about your style and presentation, the use of rhetorical questions that came out very well. There is this thing about you having a very passionate appeal, convincing the audience that uh, your point and what you believe in is uh, what we should buy, which is a very good quality of uh, an eclectic debater. So you are a debater with uh, a lot of potential. Keep that gear there. I want to get some of your um, comments, how you felt the debate was. So who's, who wants to start? Uh, the debate was a really good experience, something that I have never done before and I hope to do more of in the future. It was really a really nice competition. I really liked the, you know, and uh, anxiety was there. Yeah. But like once you get on stage and you see where you're like, oh my God, okay, so no more. Like the anxiety just disappears and you're like, oh my God, so it's here and it's time and you can't do nothing about it. First of all, I really want to thank you guys for this opportunity because it's my very first time over here and this has really helped me. Like it has really helped improve my confidence. Like especially, okay, I'm going to say that I want to pursue law in future and by engaging myself in such an activity it has really enhanced enhanced my confidence so i'm really looking forward to engaging in more debates personally i think it is an experience that is very enhancing and um nourishing because for a person like me i'm very socially awkward but i don't know it gives you some kind of passion when you're just on stage you're yeah. just speaking and you feel like yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. And Mount Lavena girls, the judges awarded you 68%. A round of applause for Mount Lavena. <laughs> Moy Girls School, Nairobi, the judges awarded you 65%. A round of applause for Moy Girls School, Nairobi. And the winners of this debate are Mount Lavena girls with a 68%. A round of applause, please, for Mount Lavena. And we have come to the end of this debate. And until next time, it is goodbye from us. Don't forget to follow our social media handle on YouTube, on Instagram, and on Twitter at The Debate Circle. And it is Kwaheri from us. Yeah.